you ever find yourself admiring other people's work and wonder how in the world did they get this good? Well, I know I always do this. So I got on Instagram and I asked away, and this is what I came up with. Welcome back everybody, I'm James Alcatraz, and today we'll be learning five things. You can call them secrets, you can call them hacks, you can call them tips, but regardless of what you call them, these are the five things all successful photographers do, and we're gonna learn them today. Before we get started, let me know in the comments below what you think a successful photographer looks like. To me, a successful photographer is somebody that can get amazing shots at will. And I think doing that is so difficult because you got to know so much. I mean, you have to understand your camera, you have to understand your lens, you have to understand light. And look, and these are just the physical things. And then you have to use foresight and you have to use your imagination. I mean, you have to understand the atmosphere you're trying to create, the tone you're trying to create. And these are all things you have to do in your imagination. And that's also difficult to do. Then the most difficult part is putting all that together and making sure that each one of those components works in line to create an amazing shot. And then you have to do that every single time. And that's why I think that's what a successful photographer is. Listen, this is what a successful photographer looks like to me. So knowing that, let's jump into number one. Always have your camera on hand and do your best to understand lighting. Really? Always? Yes, always, of course. See, but here's the thing. You don't have to have a, a fancy $3,000 camera every single time you go out. Just the point is you want to have something at hand, something you can take out at any moment, put it in your backpack, put it in your back pocket, but always have it ready. The reason why I think this is vital is because we get into a routine. I mean, usually Monday through Friday, we kind of do the same thing over and over. I mean, maybe you're going to college, maybe you have a job, you're going to be doing something over and over. You're going to be passing by cars, people, buildings. And I encourage you take a picture of whatever subject you have in mind, but do it once a day. And I guarantee you, once you have, let's just say a week's worth of photos of, let's say a building or a car, I can guarantee you that, that those pictures will change depending on the day because you have to deal with the clouds, you have to deal with the sun. And at first you'll just be taking an image, but after a while, maybe after a month, you'll start to see how clouds and the sun, how they play. Maybe it's an overcast day and the light is really diffused. Shadows are flat. Another day, it's the exact opposite. Maybe the sun is super strong and there's not a cloud in the sky. Now I'm telling you, this will pay off down the road. Now look, you might say, well, I don't plan on being outside. I plan to have a studio where I can control everything. But listen, if you're early in your photography career and you're still trying to master lighting, I encourage you to use the sun and the clouds before you buy all that fancy equipment. Because when you are ready to upgrade to that, it'll cut your learning curve in half, if not more. And then you'll be able to get to the good stuff immediately and it just makes photography that much funner. Also, if you are getting into indoor photography, you'll be amazed what the sun can do. Depending on the temperature of the light, you know, you could have amazing shots that a $200 light couldn't get. And by always having your camera and doing your best to understand the lighting, nothing else can beat that. All right, let's jump into number two. Always offer or look for an opportunity to do a professional photo shoot. And look, I'm not telling you to make money off of this. That's not the point. As a matter of fact, offer to do it for free. And even if you don't plan on making money off of this hobby at any point, I still encourage this. Also, before we go any further, please make sure do not lie about your abilities. Be very upfront with the people what you can't produce. I mean, the last thing you want is say that you can do a wedding and just offer garbage pics and ruin somebody's, you know, once in a lifetime uh, event. Don't be that person. Be very honest. Start small, think small and then grow. Another reason why I think this is super important is because the joy that you're going to get out of it. I mean, nothing feels better than when someone comes to you with an idea and you're the one that executes it for them. And you guys can both enjoy the vision that was created through your art. Another thing to keep in mind is getting a professional photographer. It's not cheap and not everybody can afford a two hour session with a professional photographer. So when you can offer a luxury service to a family, I mean, there's no better feeling than that. And if for some reason you feel weird about this, I mean, think about it this way. You're helping them and they're helping you. So it's an equal exchange. And especially if you're not charging at all. So if you're not doing this, start doing it. All right, this is one of my personal favorite ones. Be curious and let your mind wander constantly. I don't consider myself a very creative person. It's just not an intuitive trait of mine. I find myself having to work really hard to, to execute on anything creative. But the one thing I am kind of good at is visualizing ideas and coming up with cool concepts. I think that in the grind of trying to learn photography or trying to learn any hobby for that matter, is we get stuck in these loops and we constantly are just trying to eat away at one problem and we forget to let go from time to time. 
And then that's when we start to hit those mental blocks. This is when my wisdom comes through. I know for myself to get in a really creative mindset, I have to be moving around and I have to be listening to music. So of course I grab my Sony XM3s and I go for a long walk and it always surprises me just how many ideas start to pour out of me. They're not all good, but it's better than not getting anything at all. And most important, you get to start um, trying to think up of ideas, generate concepts, and this is really important if you're trying to be creative at any point in your life. I think ideas are the soul of any project, or you can think of it as like the foundation for any project too. So if you're not letting your mind wander, then maybe it's time to do that. Let me know in the comments what you do to get those creative juices flowing. All right, let's move on to number four. Never stop learning. It's so easy for us to settle in any phase of our journey and constantly do the same thing over and over. I mean, it's our comfort zone. So why get out of it? And although I think repetition is beyond important, there also comes a point when you have to start learning new things. Otherwise, you never really grow. And when you pair this with my third secret, the synergistic energy between the two is tremendous. And when you do finally decide to take a little detour from the usual and you come across an awesome idea or concept, you might be limited on what you can do because you spent so much time on one thing. In photography, you have to jump around from subject to subject, from concept to concept, from idea to idea, because you'll be able to kind of like mesh all these thoughts in together at some point down the road so that when the time comes and you are ready to execute an idea, you at least have a foundation. All right, here's number five. And without a doubt, the most important. If you're super serious about becoming like a professional photographer, especially if you wanna start charging money, you have to watch this one all the way through. Get a mentor and ask them to give you everything they can offer. Finding somebody that's successful in what you wanna be great in is imperative if you wanna reach those levels that not a lot of people reach. And the reason why that is, is because you're essentially reaching out to somebody that's made all the mistakes that you would make too if you were to go on this journey. Uh, over years. But when you find that mentor, it alleviates a lot of the stress and it creates a shortcut because you're not making the same mistakes that they are and you're able to learn from what they've done. And the great thing about getting a mentor, it doesn't really cost you a thing because chances are they're super passionate about photography and they're dying to teach people what they know. Or at the very least, pick up a tab from time to time, get some coffee for them, buy them lunch. Another little tip too is let's say you do find somebody that's willing to mentor you. Make sure to always be humble. Make sure to always be gracious because they're giving you the most valuable thing and it's not money. It's their time. Listen, being successful in photography can take many shapes. What's successful to me might not be successful to you. Regardless, these five things that you learned today will get you one step closer to achieving the goals that you want to achieve. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Of course, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, watch a few more of my videos, and most importantly, leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought of this video. Thanks. All right, now that we're one step closer to being a great photographer, get out there and pursue your passion.